above 25, are you continuing to bang on or are you starting to ease bang at that point? So, assuming you've run out of range on everything you've got, you, you're DEFCON 2 on the rake, you've got the Cunningham pulled as high as you can, you've got the G leads <coughs> out, board, boards as high up as you're prepared to take it, then at that point, if I'm still being overpowered, I'll start easing off on the off on the van. Well, tell the crew to put their hands above their head. <laughs> do that first. Do that first. Yeah. yeah. So do you ease the van before you would ease the, uh, the ram? Or would, would you never ease the ram. You do not ease the ram. the ram. That's going to be doing the opposite of what you want. Yeah. Okay. Do not ease the ram. If you can pull more ram on, pull more ram on. Because that's going to open up twist. the top. Yeah. 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 So rather I used to. I used to have that. I used to do that, and all you're doing is making the bottom of the cell draggier. Sorry, the top of the cell draggier. You're straightening up the upper mast and, and, and tightening up your upper leech, which is absolutely what you don't want. It's violent when you go to ease it as well. Well, see, so if you yeah. ease the, if you're totally bottomed out, so I, I sailed with Rick Schmondel, right, and he, uh, we were out of range that yeah. the second day at the Welling yeah. Regatta, and he, he, he called for easing the ram. And it certainly I'll, I'll beat him tonight when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> so intuitively, I mean, it would, it would bend the, the lower part of the mast, right? And right, but, it, but you're right, it's straightening the top part of the mast. Does it strain yep. the top part? Absolutely strains the top part, which is tightening up your upper leech, which is where you, you, don't, want a, a, you don't want return up there. So help this me understand why it would help. I'm just trying to understand. So we had this conversation yeah. yesterday, and and if you look at look at the boat, and I I, 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 I used to think exactly the way you're saying there, mm -hmm. and then somebody I forget who it was pointed out to me. Look at the physics of the of the challenge here. Right. You've got this little tube at the very bottom of the mast, and you really think that's influencing the bend over the whole of the mast. It isn't. What's influencing the bend over the mast are the shrouds, <laughs> the rig tension, the main sheet, the bang. It is not the ram. All the ram is doing is, is, is basically dictating where that bend's going to be. The bend's going to be there regardless. So all that bend's going to be there. All you're doing really is saying where that bend's going to be. So when, so when you ram on, you're taking the bend out of the bottom of the mast and, and putting it into the, the top. top. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So you, okay, so you're using the ram, you would actually flatten that portion of the mast. You're going to move the bubble down the mast. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. and then you're, and then you're so you're flattening the base of the cell, which isn't a bad thing, but unfortunately, <laughs> the bad thing is you're straightening the top. So, so you have the power down low and have the twist up high. So yeah, yeah. yeah. waves, and then you yep. have, and the boats, get to the waves. Yeah. Get, get point. Uh, yeah, I have a great, great picture of that from the North Americans in Santa Cruz in like ninety seven, <coughs> ninety eight, uh, ninety nine. It was howling, howling, huge waves, and we kicked the ram off. I had no idea. We've got this picture of us sideways. And the bottom of the mast is just like this, and the top is bolt straight. The bottom of the sail is full, and the top is just flogging like crazy. You couldn't control it. It was so out of whack with that. I mean, it, it was as you pulled it in, you pulled in the sheet, the top would twist off, but the bottom was in hard. You eased off, the top would kick to weather, the bottom would be flogging. I mean, it was opposite of what you wanted completely. And we looked at that picture and thought, holy smoke, what are we doing? You know, we, we had obviously kicked it off. You could see it was dramatic. I mean, dramatic. And it was one of those things when they started saying, you've got to have it to keep that bend all the way through. And like we talked about in, in Seattle, I marked at 35 knots, and that sail is just barely kicking a little bit. It's not full rag at any point. You yeah, and you can you can you've got so many other controls that can help with the with the fullness in the bottom. You have weighing the cane and pulling it out or putting the flat and all of those things can take the shape out of the bottom. You also lose probably lose four state tension right when the ram comes off because the mast overbends yeah. and the ram yeah. the four state falls yeah. forward. Yeah, so that's the problem happened, gets too. worse as you let that off. Yeah, which is why we all now got or a lot of us have got tracks on the shrouds. So oh, to get the angle back. To get the angle end. back. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and you move those back in higher breeze. Yeah, yeah. Just because if you actually look at the geometry again with the, the amount of rake we're using, you actually pass through right. the pivot points. Right. Basically, so, instead of turn, instead of moving the spreaders back, you're moving the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, actually moving the mat back actually moves the spreaders forward. 
which isn't ideal, but I think right. more, yeah. more importantly, it keeps the rigging column. Okay, all right. E ease, ease the main, and then steer back down. So that's kind of would be my steer, steer up, ease the main, steer down, sheet back on again. So it's not. <coughs> I mean, it's you're not pinching, you're not feathering. Is it what you call I'm, I'm, feathering? I'm, we just I'm, had this I'm, conversation I'm, earlier. Yeah, so. I, I would. I think I would be typically first thing is if you know it's coming, you should be you should be over hiking, trying to get the boat above you before it hits. I'm always trying to uh, if there's a puff coming, I would always try to get the boat heeling to where the weather before it it hits, uh -huh. so that you know. I, Probably, I'd probably ease a little bit before it's hit if I see it coming, and and start to steer up a bit into it. And as it hits, be steering through it, easy more main sheet, rebalancing the boat, then the main back on, and then really leaning into it. And you know, w w what um, Carl and Rob do is is uh, in in those conditions is they go to Superman, so they go both hands straight out, tiptoes uh -huh. through that pressure, get the speed up. As long as they can hold it, and then we accelerate through it. So if you look, there's some great pictures of Robert in Kiel where he's Superman in, and it's so fast. You so that's what you're describing is the difference between absorbing a little a little pulse and changing a gear. We, we, because you don't want to break the, the no, boat. Right? You, you've got, you, you want to. So they go fully Superman, fully stretch. I'm hiking hard. And if that's new breeze. Then start to rake maybe it, if, if it's going to, and, and that's what you know. They, they, they'll they'll tell me they'll go. You know, this this this, this, is, this is new breeze. This is staying, yeah. and then I'll shuffle strings. Yeah. What is your cue for trimming the vang? Like, do you do 50% dock on the telltale? I know you said how he stalls it, but you know what is? How do you trim the vang? And are you so playing not, the vang a lot? So I've got a fairly well calibrated line on the vang, and I'm looking at where my my block is. Right. I, 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 an interesting thing I find is from tack to tack, depending on the sunlight, the sails look different. You know, I look at it on the start, yeah, that's about right, then we'll tack and wow, that's really twisty on this tack. Yeah. So I think it's, it's more just repeating settings I know that, that are fast with the rake I've got. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and again, how we play some of the other boats. If we're faster and lower, I'll pull more on. If we're higher and slower, I let some off. So it's really the communication between the two of us, how we're doing against other boats. So, yeah. Are your, your banging sheets all marked? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's calibrated. Jib sheets marked. Bangs marked. Yeah. Uh, this probably never. never